What's up? All right. Hey, how's it going? This is Ungayo Bielam, MarijuanaPolitics.com. I'm sitting here with the one and only, the fabulous, the incredible, the tireless, the hardworking, the <laughs> estimated profit of medical marijuana right here, Steve D'Angelo. How are you, man? I'm great, man. Good to see you can hug it up. Oh, my well, goodness. Goliath is there. This is his dog, Goliath. I'm inspired for the next month. Yes, you're, yes, you're right there. Goliath. Goliath. Oh, well, you've inspired me for years, sir, so we appreciate it. All right. uh, mostly, we're here to talk about your new book you got coming out. The Cannabis book. Manifesto, hitting the it. bookstores September 22nd. Yeah, September 22nd. All right. I've, uh, I have got an advanced copy, you know, because I'm an editor or whatever. You're an editor. Sure. Friend. That, that's what they tell me. <laughs> and uh, I, I thought it was pretty good, actually. Um, I would actually like to talk to you more about how you feel about the future of cannabis. Where do you see it going? What do you see happening? Because I see some things. I was just up in Oregon. Maybe we could chop, chop it up about that for a minute. Well, you know, I mean, there's so many things things to think about in, in terms of the future, right? I mean, there's all the new different kinds of cannabis products that are going to be developed and all of the brands that are going to be developed. Did you just hear about this thing the other day where some scientists in Germany have gotten yeast to create THC chemicals? Yeah, and I'll tell you, I was, I was a suspicious of it. Sure. Uh, because the original impetus for that technology was to grow opiates with yeast, so oh. that uh, that then you could have a legal supply of opiates from yeast and uh, then more easily eradicate the opium poppy. So, right. Um, I understand from reading the newspaper articles that that is not what the scientists say they had in mind in this case. I hope that uh, that's true. Listen, while you're forgive me your, for being distrustful, your, your THC infused yeast may make great bagels. I feel like nothing will replace smoking a joint. I don't that's think just how I, you know, I, I'm not really. Hey, let me get some of that pumper nickel bag. I don't think that's really how it's going to work. Mother Nature gave this this pretty good technology for reducing THC. Yeah, CBD. CBD. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, Three hundred and eighty-eight other ones, or something like that. Something yeah, like that. Something I think like there's that. ways we can deal with it <laughs> for sure. Uh, so yeah, what do you see as the future in? Uh, you know, California just passed 243 and 266, or I don't know if they passed them yet. They're at the governor's desk. They're, They're at the them? governor's desk. Word is the governor's going to sign them. Almost, it's, you know, seeing as his office was completely involved in it, it seems like he almost has to sign it. Do you think that's a step forward? I mean, I've, I've got mixed feelings. I've heard mixed reviews. Uh, what do you, how do you feel about it? I think it's a step forward. Uh, look, in, you know, in 1996, we passed Prop 215 and right. called on the legislature to do this. To create this. something. And for 20 years, they have refused to do it. Yes. So it's long overdue. It's about time, uh, and I'm glad that it passed. That said, I think there were some problems with the way that it passed. Woo-hoo! Let's talk about yeah, this uh, skullduggery, okay. kicking everybody out the room all of a sudden. Uh, yeah, they, we were going to vote on this bill, but we don't really know what's in it. You won't know what's in it until 2 Nobody on knew Friday. what was in that bill right. when they voted on it because right. it hit the legislator's desks, you know, something like an hour or two before they voted on it. It was kind of shady. It was very shady, and, uh, and you know, the, the language of this measure is very obtuse and very complex, even for people who had a chance to read it. Yes! It takes a few days people to digest it and talk right about now. it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still don't know what it means completely. I kind of <laughs> skimmed it, and overall, <laughs> I think it's not bad. There's definitely some things that we could fix, but uh, like I wrote in a column the other day, uh, this is what we asked for, right? Be careful what you wanted. You want regulations, you want it to be taxed. Uh, you want to be treated like a business, we got to do it like this. I just wish that um, legislatures would quit treating weed like crack and treat it more like wine. You, know, you understand where I'm coming from on that? Yeah, and I think that we're beginning to see that. I think that this is the first step in, in, yeah. in that direction. And look, you know, the first time you do anything, right, is it the best? It's like, you know, the first kid always gets in more trouble than the second two or three kids. <laughs> So, uh, uh, it, look, this is what I've realized is that it's, it is all a process. There's never right. going to be a point at which in our lifetimes that this struggle is finished. Hopefully, it's a matter of moving it. No, no. <clears throat> we will continue for the next 30 or 40 years to be figuring out the right role in our society for cannabis, how to regulate it, how to teach our children about it. That is not something that's going to end. We are still in the beginning stages of doing that. I like it. All right, we'll be right back in just a moment right here at MarijuanaPolitics.com. Whoop. All right, and we're back. That was fast, right? Yeah. yeah that's how we do it. All right. Uh, I'm sitting here with Steve D'Angelo, author of the Cannabis Manifesto, the, what would you call, the founder, one of the co-founders of the Harborside? Co-founder of Harborside Health Center, Steve Hill Laboratory, and the Arcview Group. And the Arcview Group. Yeah, hey, I got some things to pitch to you about that later when we turn the cameras off. But, uh... <laughs> 
Uh, so tell me more about this book, man. You got this new book out. Comes out September twenty second. You're just laying out your manifesto for weed for marijuana in general. It is. Or? It's. It, it is eight statements of belief. And in each statement of belief, I back up that statement of belief with uh, politics, history, um, science, and personal anecdote. So the first chapter is entitled, Cannabis Isn't Harmful, But Prohibition Is. Here, here. I think we can agree on that. <laughs> and the second chapter is entitled, uh, what is the second chapter entitled? Here? Uh, <laughs> I can't remember. It's Not entitled, something about medicine or wellness or something like that. Cannabis should never have been made illegal. Should never have should been, never made, been illegal. made illegal. It's true. So uh, some sure. very basic statements. But what I do is I really take all of the most up-to-date science, yeah. all of the most up-to-date political developments, mm -hmm. and then the goal is to uh, produce a an activist handbook so that people are well equipped to engage in the debate with in whatever level they choose to, to debate and also a primer I think there's a lot of people Is it primer or a primer primer or primer one of them they're, <laughs> they're prim and proper I think primers are primer. prim and proper by definition it's a prim except and mine's primer. not and it mine's bears not prim and proper so <laughs> a non prim <laughs> Unproper primer, primer and primitor. Yes, there, there you go. go. Got it. Uh, <laughs> as long as we had that cleared up. <laughs> yes. Uh, so is this aimed at people who already are familiar with uh, cannabis activism, or people who are new with cannabis activism, or people who just want to learn more about being an activist for cannabis or cannabis in general? It's it's designed for people who are already committed to the cause. All right. Uh, to empower them and give them a really good toolkit. A good set of talking points mm -hmm. and ideas and mm -hmm. ways to do things. Yeah. It's also um, an introduction for you know the huge number of Americans who are just tuning into the issue for the first time now, right, who right. might not know the history, might not know the background, might not know the science, might not know the racism, might not know the racism, <laughs> which you know is covered extensively There's in the book. A, it's a very interesting time uh, to, to, when you discuss race and marijuana these days, because you know um, for the longest time a lot of the uh, we say like the NAACP or other groups were against marijuana legalization because they felt like drugs were a scourge in the African-American community. And now more and more people come around saying that, like you say, prohibition is a bigger problem than marijuana ever would be. Well, this is one of the reasons I lay out the history of prohibition mm -hmm. uh, in the book, because you know what, what I learned when I did the research, and I actually didn't really need to do the research to know this, but what, what became evident... When you Googled the research? <laughs> what became evident was that... <clears throat> It, uh, that disparate enforcement of cannabis laws is not inadvertent. It's not an, in an unintended Ooh, consequence. Not it was the primary motivating purpose of cannabis prohibition in the first place. You cannot disentangle racial justice from prohibition in this country. Wow. They are, they are intertwined. It, totally intertwined. Intertwined. Did you read uh, Michelle Alexander's The New Jim Crow? The New Jim Crow. Lays it out, chapter and verse. Chapter and verse, cousin. Right. All right. Uh, that's another short segment with Steve D'Angelo. His new book, The Cannabis Manifesto, comes out September 22nd. Look for it in your bookstores. Get it on your Amazon and things like that. MarijuanaPolitics.com. Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> nice. Uh, all right. Uh, let's talk about, let's ask some other questions now, too. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? All right, we'll do it like this. Okay, we're back. MarijuanaPolitics.com. I'm Guy Obelum, Steve D'Angelo. He's my new co-host. I wish. He actually has a real job, so I don't think he can just travel around the country smoking weed and talking to people. Although, you used to do that, right? That was your thing back in the day? Well, I still do do a little bit of that now and then. Do you? What's your, let me ask you, what's, uh, who's got the best weed right now? I just got back from Oregon. Uh, I've been on a little bit, like I was in uh, Colorado in April, and I was in Washington in August, and I was just in Oregon, and of course I live in California. So I can give you uh, my top four, or what order that the these states are in right now. Well, but, I'll tell uh, you something you shocking. I'm, I'm really, basically don't smoke weed. You don't smoke weed? And you're, are you all oils and dabs? See, um, yeah, I, you know what I really love now is the rosin tech. And the, the live rosin? Was, yep. I like the no, live no, rosin. Not the live, not no, the live rosin usually is made with a BHO process. I don't like the BHO. I don't like the BHO either. But the rosin tech, where where you're creating... Is that where you just use the hair straightener? Well, yeah, but there's a little Modified more sophisticated way to do it. Right, right. Uh, but, uh, you, yes. you have to wear gloves No use butane. The hair you know, well, you know, for me, everything that's made with alcohol or butane uh, it feels weird in my lungs. It doesn't feel like cannabis. I try to talk about yeah. this all the time. 
and I'm not trying to be a fuddy-duddy or a Luddite, and I understand that many people do derive serious medical benefit from some of these butanes and CO2s, but as uh, someone who's at least half hippie, <laughs> I feel like, why do plants need chemicals? Why can't we just have some ice water and some keef and make a nice hash. Am I old like that? You kids with your futuristic vapor sticks or whatever. We can't just have two hot knives in a wine bottle. Why does everything have to be so so fancy? Well, in my opinion, the the new SHO, the solvent-free extracts that are yeah. coming out now, which you can get in a shatter form, you can get in a butter form, you can get in an oil form. What's the technique on that? <clears throat> Basically mechanics, heat, and pressure. Uh, but there's a lot of different ways that you can mm -hmm. you, that you can spin that um, around, and so when I take a hit of the SHO, the solventless extracts, it feels like cannabis. It feels like I have a flower in my lungs. Whatever happened to cold water hash? Do people still do that? This is the next that? evolution of the cold next evolution. water hash. So so with the rosin, with this technology, you can take a bud, mm -hmm. you can take dry sifted hash, okay. you can take water hash. And then you can use the, the heat and the pressure and the mechanical manipulation in order to further extract it. I'll have to look into some of this. It's amazing, and, man. Uh, oh, maybe I'll try some today. Come over to <laughs> I'll come over to Harborside right here with Steve so Dan. I got, I got to plug the foremost practitioner. Uh, yeah, uh, lay it on The me. man who kicked this off is a man named Tony Verzura. Tony Verzura. And uh, he, we're lucky to have him now in, uh, in California. Oh, welcome uh, to California, so Tony. Welcome Good to, to see you here. California. Yeah. All right. Hey, so now you know. Uh, solventless is maybe better than BHO, according to Steve D'Angelo. And Ungayo still likes cold water because I'm middle-aged. MarijuanaPolitics.com. Whoop, whoop.